Okay, guys, so um, what I'm going to do is take you through a full top-down analysis, and I'm just going to show you what goes through my head when I'm looking to take a opportunity, not, not even to take a trade, but to, to look for possible situations which I want to happen. And if that equates to me finding an opportunity to enter the market, then obviously fine but if not then also fine it's just understanding how to do a top-down analysis and this can really equate to getting trades as low as the on the one minute on the 15 second and even the five second but we have to start on the higher time frame so i've got this three month time frame here and there's and the reason i've got this is because when you look at the monthly time frame there's a lot going on on the monthly time frame on NAS at the moment so i'm going to start i'm just going to start a little bit more simple and we're going to work our way down on the time frames and go from there um what i've got is you should be able to see this this uh, note here but essentially what i'm looking to do is ask myself a series of questions a top-down analysis okay so we start from the higher time frame now i want to i want to look at what we're doing so higher time identify structure and targets on the weekly and the monthly so on a three month, I asked myself a certain amount of questions. Firstly, where is smart money in drawdown? Okay, smart money is in drawdown right here because this is the last down candle before the up move, which led to this expansion to the upside. And since then, we have not come back in to mitigate from this candle. So I believe price is making its way down here to mitigate to then potentially go higher then we have to ask ourselves where is the current trading range you have to understand your trading ranges now for me the trading range is this is the low and this as the high so that is my trading range for me personally now this is another lesson but fibonacci and imbalances and things like that i can always go into but if I'm looking for uh, an optimal trading entry area, it would be somewhere in here, okay, where I've got it on red, 71 and 88.6. Now, I'm going to do a separate video which explains this in more detail. But in the meantime, I'm just going to highlight this here, which is going to be my kill zone. Just there. So my kill zone's there. Within there, there's imbalance. So there's a good, good series of confirmations there that are aligning. And realistically, that's all I'm really worried about on the three-month time frame. Okay, so let's move ourselves down. Now, before I go down, actually, excuse me, just some water. Um, I'm not looking to take a trade off this at all. Okay, I'm using this. I'm using the higher time frames as targets. I'm not taking trades. If I was to set a trade here, as an example, a stop loss there. It's a huge stop loss also that you could be in drawdown for a matter of months. And, you know, we want to be in our trades within a day. We don't want to be, you know, looking up to take a year to get a one to three or anything stupid like that. So that we use the higher time frame to align ourselves, see where we're possibly potentially heading and what we're going to be doing in the meantime to get there. Monthly time frame. So now we've got the tr current trading range. I'm going to keep the trading range the same for now because you can kind of see a bit more clearly now what's going on. So this is the big push up from the three monthly candles. And we can see the price has been breaking its way down. Okay, so we're going to ask ourselves pretty much the same question but again. Where is smart money in drawdown on the monthly time frame? Well, we can see that smart money is in drawdown here. So that's the first area I can see smart money in drawdown and we are in scroll down here as well i'm not going to tag that right now because i'm just going to use that as my um monthly candle so it's the same similar area we've got an order block there as well so what is price doing at the moment well, price is coming down it's broken structure here on the monthly so we are bearish as well as we're bullish on the three months so this is a bullish price action it's bearish at the moment but when it comes into here Typically, you would hope price is going to react over here and then push higher. So for me, that is a bullish time frame. But when you come into the monthly, we can see price broke structure to the downside. 
just here came back in and has been falling down ever since so now we could potentially come back up here and grab some of this liquidity up here but it's about seeing where the money is okay now where is the money well realistically there'll be money below this low here so we can obviously highlight that there as money and you do typically get money below like below lows but above highs all that kind of thing as well so we're identifying where the money is we're identifying where we're in drawdown so what would i like to see price do now well it can do one or two things it's either going to push its way up here which is going to take out this liquidity which sits just here which we call internal liquidity again there'll be another lesson on internal and external liquidity but for now just call it liquidity okay and then i want to see price come down into this area here to potentially push ourselves back up and that would give us what aligns on our three month time frame there as well as a line in our monthly time frame. So potentially what we're looking at is maybe buys into a sell, into a future buy. But obviously, like I said, we're not looking to take trades off of the monthly. Okay, so this is just top-down analysis for now. Okay, I'm identifying where smart money's in drawdown. I'm identifying where the money is. I'm identifying my current trading range. And we can still use this as potential targets. So we're looking to try and get into this kill zone. Now go on to the weekly time frame. We can see here, Price actually broke structure, so it was bearish. Coming down here, oh, I'll now do that again. It was bearish. And then we broke structure to the upside, but we've actually broken structure again, so we are continuing to push down. Now, this is proof here that when we pushed up here, we took out liquidity. So we can see here where the liquidity has been taken out. Okay, we've taken that money out. We're coming into this area here. It's this order block on the weekly, which if you look at it on the monthly, you can see it was just the wick. But on the, on the weekly, you can see a bit more sense of what happened. It came into this order block. Again, order blocks is another lesson. It came into the order block and then sold off. So where do I see price coming to now? Well, realistically, your current trading range is a bit different now. Okay, so if I just delete that for now, I'm going to keep that there because there's liquidity under there. We know that. Um, we will consume this obviously, and we know there's liquidity above the highs and all that kind of thing as well. I can see liquidity up here as well. So obviously, there's a lot of money in the markets as we speak, and there's going to be a lot of liquidity down here as well into our monthly candle, our three monthly candle. Identifying where the current trading range is. So for me, I would see this here as my trading range coming down into here. So this is our last up candle. So there's an area of drawdown here on the weekly. That is a, an area of drawdown. And also another area of drawdown on the weekly is right here. So where is smart money and drawdown? Well, up here at the top of the trading range and down here. Price broke below here. So again, two areas we could potentially get something. Now there's a typical rule of thumb. I don't typically pay attention to much unless it comes above 50%. So I wouldn't really want to sell. If this was a lower time frame, maybe a five minute or 50 minute, I would not entertain the idea of selling in here because it's not gone above 50%. If it goes above 50% of the range to come down again, then I'll be looking to get in. That's absolutely fine. So this is a more appealing area to me because what it could do is take out liquidity along its journey and liquidity sweep coming in, take this candle and then come in for sales. And obviously you can see here, we've created a new low below here. So we can anticipate potential moves to the upside to maybe do that. But we'll obviously have to wait and find out what happens there. Moving down to a time frame. So now we know the current trading range on the weekly is here, okay? Moving down, it's the same trading range for me personally. I'm going to use the same just as a bit of a, an example, but what where can we be looking? Now, the daily is protecting this weekly area up here. So when, when you travel down time frames, it tells a little bit more of a story every single time. Okay, we can see here price is extremely bearish coming down, and we actually broke structure to the upside just here. So I would anticipate price to come into this daily area here. 
And if we can do that, then I would be looking to get buys up into this area here, potentially targeting these areas here, because the higher time frames mean that you can obviously do that. You know, the current trading range at the moment on the daily is a little bit lower. But at the same time, is this a refined trading range? Because we haven't actually made much of a retracement just yet. So that's why for now I'm going to keep it there, because at the moment I'd say the trading range needs a bit more confirmation from me to get into it okay um but that's where we're, that's where we're in jordan now this is it, price has come into an order block again an order blocks another lesson but with this order block that could mean price never actually comes back to this daily candle here and just carries on moving straight up but obviously we'll have to wait and see but within here we filled in a little bit of imbalance and we came into this order block here this is the entire push down that took out a lot of liquidity over here as well to create a new low. So I'm just going to go down to the four hour and you can see what price is currently doing. Um, pushed all the way above. We can see the break of structure to the upside and we've left a lot of imbalance, and a lot of liquidity down here. We've got a whole order block we've not even touched yet. We've got imbalance within the order block, but we did come down and create this structure before making a new high. So today I was looking in this area here during the New York session. However, I personally don't like it and it's not an ideal situation to take buys from because we're not low enough on our trading range. So looking at where our current trading range is, just gonna get rid of that. For me, personally, I would like this to be our trading range. Okay, so trading range at the top here. And the bottom of the trading range just here. And I would like to use that as a target to potentially come in a little bit lower. But at the same time, I am respecting structure. We are in a four hour low, four hour high coming in to this low price. Did give us some kind of reaction to the upside, but price has been up and down today. So what I noticed earlier was this one hour distribution coming in. Price came into it and gave us a reaction. Coming into a 15 minute, we can see here, price came in to this area here and then broke structure to the downside. And then this is a big area to be looking at here, but the potential we could fall from here now. But let's just take ourselves back a few steps. It would be more ideal for price to come lower into a discount level. Discount level is what we base on our Fibonacci. And that isn't around here, where we're going to just call it our kill zone for now. Again, guys, there'll be lessons on all this for beginners. Um, obviously, if you not understand smart money, you understand Fibonacci, you understand imbalance, you understand institutional candles, but you're a bit fuzzy on top-down analysis, then you know this is the video for you guys to watch. Okay, This is just how I do it. So looking at what we're up to here, we can see price broke structure. We've got our kill zone in here. We've got our four hour candle. This is the ideal environment that I would like to personally buy. I would love to see a break of structure coming down here. So I'd love to see price close below there. Now I'll potentially be looking for sales into this area here because we've got a long way to go till we get down here. But at the same time, if you're trading with price, Realistically, you want to be looking to get a buy in here and here somewhere. Now, obviously, price could very, very easily just push up straight from here. And there's nothing unusual about that in the typical modern world that we're in, the current way the markets work. There's nothing stopping price from moving up here, which is why it was an area I was looking at. But coming into this morning, the first thing I saw was that we did distribute up here. So we can see here price, um, we can see high, low, new high, just about new high, and then broke structure just here. So with that new break of structure, I was looking in this area here. It wasn't very easy to see at this point in particular, but one thing I was looking at, it was either going to be a sell in this area, or a buy through this candle here. Now I wasn't going to set 
endings on either, but I was looking to see what price was going to do. Now, price didn't come into this candle in the end, but it did come in to this four hour candle here. So if we take the whole move, we can see price did do that. Price came in and did break structure, came in for New York, pushed higher, but it came straight into our one hour area, which is in this PLI here. So I'm now discounting this because what price then did was break structure to the downside. And you can clearly see there, price is now back in and revisiting that area. Now, I'd like to see price push up and up into this area here, this five minute candle. This is a really nice institutional candle, albeit it didn't sweep liquidity, but it's a nice beefy looking candle. It's in our POI. If price was to carry on making structure like this and then suddenly does that, I would be looking to sell somewhere around here. And this is how I typically will get into the markets. Okay, I don't ever get into a trade unless it's in a point of interest, an ideal environment. Now, this would have turned into an ideal environment had we have disrespected the one hour. So if price had come into here and then made a new high up here, if we'd have done that, potentially I would have been looking in here because I would have bought into the idea that actually price is working its way up from here now. So that's something that you have to kind of bear in mind. And you do have to just trade what you see. You're not going to be right every single time. You trade on probability. You never, ever, ever trade on facts. The markets are very manipulated, and especially this week with the news and, and whatnot as well, with the um, employment news and things like that that happen in America. So, yes, the ideal environment is for price to come back down here, for us to buy into a higher area. Also, guys, the daily here is broken structure. It does not mean we're going to respect it. There's every likelihood price will shoot into somewhere around here and just carry on forward. Because as far as it goes from the weekly standpoint, we are bearish. And from the monthly, we are bearish. From the three monthly, we're bullish, but we're in a very bearish momentum coming down. Our big target is still here. This is why it's important to look at the FIB zones and, and, and the higher time frames. OK, looking for your ideal environment this is very, very important because we know our ideal environment that makes sense on a three month time frame is for price to come all the way down here. So when we're surfing around on the smaller time frames, we know, OK, we're going to get for buys in here. But let's not forget, we've got this area here, which is going to be our first, our big, big target for the future. So looking at what price is up to now, if price came down to here, which is a discount level pushed up, great. But we know our targets, but if we get the buys, where are our targets going to be? Well, the first target is going to be, realistically, you're not going to be looking to trade any higher than up here because looking at higher time frame structure, the chances are it's going to get to this weekly area and it's going to fall down. Looking at the daily, I wouldn't want to really, even the first target would be the first daily candle because we could we could exactly this, we don't have to respect it. We could respect it. We could fall. So it's important to have targets and keep yourself realistic to whatever you guys are doing. But as of now, I want to see a break of structure on the five minute. I'm in the UK coming to the end of New York session. It's quarter to five in the afternoon here. Um, New York time, it's approaching quarter to 12, I think. So obviously, you know, coming up to lunchtime, but the prime time to trade in the New York session is in the morning. We are approaching the time and now where it's not an ideal environment to be trading. Time and price is very important to me. So I'm probably not going to get into any trades today. If, if price comes into there, it's just going to have to be something I miss out on. Um, very, very simple. But the point wasn't to show you the trades I'm looking at. The point of today and this session was to show you how to do the top down and a top down analysis. What I'll do, I'll do another top-down analysis video and I'll try and make it a little bit more simplified for anyone that's still having trouble understanding. Um, but I'm going to leave it there and we will go over this in more detail. But that's just how I go from three months all the way down to one hour and then the 15 minute and then the five minute. Okay, so I wish you guys all the luck in the world with your trading. I hope you get on well. Any questions, please let me know. And I will speak to you guys soon. Thank you very much.